The current COVID-19 pandemic places a huge strain on healthcare systems with overloaded hospitals and a lack of testing capabilities. Since chest x-rays are usually used to identify signs of pneumonia, I figured I'd use them to identify viral and bacterial infections and perhaps help with the COVID diagnostic process. A chest x-ray is a type of imaging study that helps us better understand the patient's lungs and its health. In severe COVID cases, chest x-rays will show signs similar to pneumonia. X-ray analysis calls for the expertise of a radiologist, and even outside of a situation such as a pandemic, the wait time is too long. The average wait time ends up being around 11 days, and although it only takes them an average of 20 minutes to actually review an X-ray because it builds up and the workload keeps increasing, it ends up stretching to about two weeks. So by decreasing the amount of time that is needed to diagnose, um, pneumonia, patients can receive care sooner. Obviously, I am not a medical professional, I am doing this for fun, and I just wanted to experiment with my skills in a more practical manner. So, x-rays are actually part of a multidisciplinary approach for diagnosing COVID, which means they're used in tandem with other confirmatory approaches like a viral test. So, I'm actually going to be doing three tests in total. So, I'm going to do COVID versus normal and viral pneumonia versus bacterial pneumonia versus normal and then all four of the classes which is COVID versus viral versus bacterial versus normal. And in order to do this I'm going to use transfer learning which is basically to make up for the fact that we don't really have enough data for each of the classes. So transfer learning is a type of deep learning concept where you basically grab an existing saved model that's already spent time training on a lot of data and apply the features that it has learned from its experience to your new problem. So this is kind of like if you borrow someone's um, piano skill to play jazz. So transfer learning basically lets you leverage past knowledge of like related tasks to solve the current problem. So I actually use the VGG16 model in QRS and VGG16 is a large network that's composed of multiple arrangements of like convolutional layers and max pooling layers. So I imported a pre-trained pre VGG16 model for transfer learning and then I added my own dense layers to the sequential model and then I proceeded to compile the model. I continued training the model and implemented two different callbacks which is early stopping and model checkpoint. So early stopping is a type of curious callback that helps ensure you're basically making progress in your training method instead of just like wasting time. So what it does, it monitors a certain metric like validation accuracy and stops the training early if there's like a lack of substantial improvement in the model's performance. And then you have model checkpoint. Model checkpoint basically means every once in a while um, you have your progress, right? And then with the callback, when a certain metric reaches a certain point or increases by a certain incremental amount, it saves the model. So what were my results? Well, for COVID versus normal, I actually was able to get a perfect score and it was able to classify everything completely correctly for the test um, data. I think more data is actually needed for further testing on that aspect though. And then for the viral versus bacterial versus normal, I was able to get a decent score of like 99%, which is also super um, good, but still, as said previously, I believe definitely more data is needed than what we had. And then for the four classes question, which was COVID versus viral versus bacteria versus normal, I got a lower score of around 80. And I think that might be due to how COVID is a virus and it's a symptom, it causes a symptom of pneumonia. So it is to be expected. After asking my sister and doing a bit of research, I found that it's most experienced and well-trained radiologists can identify between viral pneumonia and bacterial pneumonia. But uh, it makes sense for my model to have much more difficulty differentiating COVID from viral pneumonia because usually it's used in supplementary with like viral tests, etc. And it's only used to monitor the progression of disease or kind of assess the health of the individual's lungs, not as like a test for a specific virus. So thanks for watching. See you next time.